Hi there! This video shows how to restyle a WordPress site using MicroThemer. Once installed, we can access the interface via the MicroThemer link. This will bring up MicroThemer's visual interface that sits above our website. Our WordPress theme is a bit dark and moody. With some design tweaks, we can make it look fresh and modern, like this. Let's start by restyling the links in the main menu. We begin by clicking the Target button to enable targeting mode. In targeting mode, we can hover over elements on the page, and then click on the one we want to customize. In this case, we'll click on the menu link, and then hover over the plus icon for some extra options. The first option targets just the single element we clicked on. Other options allow us to target more elements. We're going to click on the option that targets the three menu links. Now we can make a simple color change, so that the links match the dark color of the logo. It's easy to apply colors that match those already on the page using color palettes. Site colors are shown on the right. We can click a gray tile to set the new color. We can also save our gray color for use elsewhere. Let's also make the font bolder. And change the case to small caps using the font variant option. Now let's style the search box. As before, we click the target button and then click the search box to select it. But this time, we'll create our selector via the top toolbar options after making a small customization. MicroThemer has automatically created a label for our selector, S. In this particular case, the label could be more descriptive, so let's change it to search box. The default general folder will do for now. So to finish, we just click the create selector button. If we want to give the search box rounded corners, we can go to the border styling group. By the way, hovering over any icon will clarify what the icon represents, and if we click the icon, we can read an explanation of what the style property does. Okay, we'll try setting the border radius to 20 pixels. Another useful tip is that if we click the chain icon, MicroThemer will automatically apply the same value to all four border radius fields. We can also add a very subtle gradient. To do this, we move on to the Gradient Styling group and set color A to white, and then color C to a very light gray. We only want a two-tone gradient, so we'll leave the middle color B blank. As well as using the target button, it's sometimes quicker to double-click elements, like the big page heading. The default label of entry title seems okay. So we'll use the green Quick Create options again. It's nice to style headings differently from the body text. We can easily apply a Google font by selecting Google Fonts from the Font Family menu. Once the page has loaded, we can visually browse the entire Google Fonts library and sort them by popularity, or alphabetically. We're going to use the bold variation of Bitter and then simply click Use This Font to apply it. To give our theme a lighter feel, we're going to switch to dark text on a white background. Let's click the Target button so we can easily find the element that covers the whole page, and then create the selector. We can change the background color to white via the background options. And to make the text readable, we'll set the font color to the dark gray we saved earlier. Our subheadings don't stand out much, so let's make some adjustments. We can target both headings by double-clicking one, and then broadening the targeting to both. We'll increase the font size to 24 pixels, and set the text to uppercase via the text options. We can give our headings a meaningful icon. We just browse for a different background image via the background options, and then click the Insert into Post button. We want our icon to appear only once, so we set the image repeat property to no repeat. And because we also don't want the icon overlapping the text, we add left padding. Finally, as we don't want to use the same icon for the method heading, we can create a separate selector just for that. Now we just need to set a different background image. We've covered the basics of applying styles. 
Now, let's see how the micro-themer can help us design for mobile. Most modern WordPress themes have some responsiveness. Micro-themer is great for customizing responsive sites, or making completely non-responsive sites responsive. Adjusting the screen width of this example theme reveals that it looks okay at smaller screen sizes, but there is certainly room for improvement. The search box, for example, could do with some work. So let's relocate the search box selector. Responsive web design. Responsive web design is achieved by applying media queries. A media query places a condition on whether the styles we define have an effect or not. The condition often relates to a minimum or maximum screen width. If we hover over the phone tab, we can see that it specifies a max width condition of 480 pixels. Clicking the phone tab reduces the site preview accordingly. The media query condition means that styles we enter under the phone tab will only have an effect if the user's screen is anything up to but no more than 480 pixels wide. To illustrate this, let's increase the width of the search box to 100%. If we then increase the size of the screen past 480 pixels by dragging the top ruler, our new style has no effect. Back at 480 pixels, our style does have an effect. We can apply this principle elsewhere. At the bottom of the page, we have some additional recipes presented in two columns. This looks fine at large screen widths, but a bit squashed on smaller screens. To target the columns, we enable targeting mode and then find the right spot that will target the whole column. Before creating this selector, let's look at the advanced targeting options. The HTML for the column is shown on the left pane, the CSS affecting it in the middle pane, and MicroThemer's targeting suggestions in the right pane. The suggestions are the same as those in the green Quick Create menu, except that the actual CSS code is shown, rather than labels, and this CSS code is editable. We can choose the option that targets both columns, and then change the generic item label to something more descriptive, like recipe columns. Then click the Create Selector button. Let's set the width of the columns to 100%. This allows the images and text to fill the full width of the screen. To keep this video short, let's finish by skimming through some other features. We can reorganize our selectors if they grow too large for a single folder, and perform actions such as edit, delete, and copy. We can temporarily disable styles for an entire folder even, or a single property group. When creating a selector, we can target elements in their hover state, or ensure targeting is restricted to the current page. When editing a live site, we can enable draft mode to ensure site visitors don't see our unfinished design. We can enable full screen mode for a better editing experience. Roll back to a previous point if we change our mind, or just reset everything and start afresh. We can back up our microthemer designs by exporting to a design pack, and then install them on other domains, or just re-import them at a later date. Those of us that like to code can import CSS from a theme or plugin into microthemer, customize media queries, view the CSS microthemer generates, include JavaScript libraries. Enable support for SCSS and set default CSS units. Enter custom CSS, SCSS, and JavaScript code via the full code editor. Tap into MicroThemer's targeting mode to auto-generate CSS selector code. Stick mostly to the GUI options, but still enter custom styles via the inline code editor. Many thanks for watching. We hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, our friendly support team is waiting to help.